Hello, Grade Sevens. Helen here with your Natural Sciences lesson. And the title of our lesson today is Energy Transfers in Mechanical Systems. So in our last lesson, you learned about the law of conservation of energy. And you learned that energy stays constant in a system. We can't create energy. We can't destroy energy. What we can do, though, is transfer from object to object or one within one object, we can transfer the energy from one form to another. But the total energy in a system must remain the same. So when one part of our system loses energy, that energy must be gained by another part of the system. And sometimes we need to realize that energy moves out of that system in a less useful or wasted form, usually in the form of heat energy. Now let's talk about mechanical systems. When we refer to a system, we talk about different parts that work together. And we've been talking about lots of systems, a skateboarder sliding down a ramp, two table tennis players knocking a ball back and forward. All of those are examples of systems where objects in this context are going to be transferring energy between them. Now, we can have different kinds of systems. Also, simply a way to understand our world a little bit better is to take systems and to classify them according to what happens in the energy transfer in that system. And today we're going to look at mechanical systems. And a mechanical system is one which is based on mechanical principles. And usually we're going to see different parts interacting in a mechanism. We're going to see that a mechanical system usually involves movement of some kind. So we know that we're going to have mechanical parts working with each other. We're obviously going to see transfers of energy between those different parts, and we're going to see movement happening. Sometimes mechanical systems can be recognized as some very simple machines that work together. And any time a force causes energy to go from one store, or one object, into another, we say that it's a mechanical energy transfer because a force is causing that energy to be transferred. So the example that I've given you here, do you recognize what this mechanical system is? Have you heard of a pulley and rope system? This is a system of parts that is used to lift heavy objects. So how does it work? The rope is pulled down, the rope goes over the pulley, and the rope is going to lift this object up. So we can see that a pulley is a very simple machine for lifting heavy objects. So let's do the first question here, or answer it, what are the different parts of this system? We have the rope, we have the pulley, please notice how you spell pulley, and we have the heavy object. But something is missing. It's not a system until it can do work. And where, what do we mean by doing work? Well, we mean that energy must come into the system. Where is the input energy in the system? Well, to make this simple machine work, the first thing we have to do is we have to pull on that rope. We have to pull the rope downwards. So what, what, where is the input energy? The input energy is pulling 
the rope down. What kind of energy is this? If we are pulling and moving the rope, well, it's kinetic energy, isn't it? Because the rope is moving and it's going to force this wheel to turn. It's going to force another part or area in the machine to move upwards. So definitely we're seeing kinetic energy here. What is the input energy transferred to from the rope to the other side of the pulley and to this little hook? And we're going to see the rope with the little hook and the object being lifted upwards. So it's going to be transferred to the pulley, which is going to transfer it again to this part of the rope to the heavy object and the heavy object then is going to move. Another example of a mechanical system is a person and a swing. Did you know that you could become part of a mechanical system? Well, if you climbed on a swing and you made the swing move, you are part of a mechanical system because you are relying on forces to get things moving in the system. So what form of energy do you, there's you, and the swing have when you are at the top of the swing's arc? So the swing, let's just draw it here, it hangs down and then it moves up to the top of its arc and it's going to move back to the opposite end of the arc. What form of energy do you and the swing have when you are at the top of the swing's arc? I hope you're shouting it out there. You have potential energy and it's potential energy as a result of your position and your height. So it is gravitational potential energy. This form of potential energy is going to become what kind of energy as you swing back down the arc? Well, it's going to become kinetic energy or movement energy as you swing downwards. Is there any other form of energy involved? Well, remember, you had to be fueled by something to help make the swing move. You didn't just get on the swing and it started moving. You had to cause that force, make the swing move. So yes, you had to have input energy in the form of chemical potential energy. Can you spot another form of energy in this system? Well, if you were to touch the little mechanism at the top of the swing where the ropes are moving on the swing, you would also find that there is wasted or dissipated heat energy. Remember, if you are swinging fast and hard, you're really trying to make that swing move as high as you can, you will start getting hot as well. And so heat energy will be lost from you as well. What about throwing a ball into the air? This is a very simple example of mechanical energy. In a mechanical system, you are becoming part of the mechanical system along with the ball. Let's answer the questions. What form of energy was transferred from your hand to the ball? What was that kind of energy? Well, you held the ball in your hand and then you moved your hand upwards. And as you move your hand, we know that we're talking about kinetic energy. As the ball moves upwards, so there we go, you threw it upwards from your hand and as the ball was moving up, what kind of of 
energy where you sing, you were seeing kinetic energy because after all, the ball was moving. But then the ball stopped moving. For a brief millisecond in time, the ball stopped moving. And there we can see that there is a transfer to potential energy. The ball stopped moving, therefore no more kinetic energy. As it stops, we know that now it has potential energy. Can you be really, really clever and tell me what kind of potential energy? Is it chemical? Is it elastic? Is it gravitational? Remember what goes up must come down. So due to the height of the ball, we know that it is gravitational potential energy. As the ball moves back down again, so now we're seeing it stopped for that millisecond and now it's starting to move down again. As it moves down, that potential energy is going to be transferred into what kind of energy as the movement happens? Well, it's kinetic energy because the ball is now moving down. Now let's talk about amounts of energy involved in this very simple system. When does the ball have the most potential energy? When it is lying down here in your hand or when it is up here at the peak of the throw? When the ball is lying on your hand, it is lower. When it is up here at the peak of its, of its movement or the throw, it is higher. So when something is higher up, it has more potential energy. So the most potential energy will be at the peak of the arc or at the peak of the throw. In other words, in those split seconds when the ball is still or not moving in the air, that is when it has the most potential energy. When does it have kinetic energy? Well, it's got kinetic energy in two places. It's got kinetic energy in terms of going up, moving up, and it's got kinetic energy as it drops down. So the kinetic energy is always going to be moving energy, moving up and falling down. That is when it's going to have kinetic energy. Let's describe these energy transfers. Let's start off with the woodcutter who is going to be chopping this log, all right? Where is the energy coming from? The energy is coming from this object, the man, who is going to eat the food. He's going to then transfer that energy into kinetic energy and bring the axe down. And he is going to cause a transfer by splitting that wood. This is an example of elastic potential energy. We're going to draw back the string of the bow and pull back the arrow, just like we did with that spring in one of our lessons. And we're going to let that spring, or in this case, the string go, and it's going to shoot the arrow forward. Can you tell me where this arrow, let's focus on the arrow as our object, where it has the greatest potential energy when it is in this position here, position one, with the string all the way back. That potential energy is released or transferred into kinetic energy as the arrow moves. I want you to try the idea of turning the handle to pull up the bucket of water in the well, which is a mechanical system similar to the pulley system, and see if you can put each of these pictures 
into a sentence describing the energy transfers. That's it for today, grade sevens. Catch you next time. Thank you.